Good afternoon, everyone. A video I did earlier pointing out there's not runaway heat in the Arctic. Temperatures are actually average or below average. For a prolific commenter on my board, way to go, ADAPT2030. Most people would never notice that your claim about the lack of Arctic heat only applies to areas north of 80 degrees north latitude, as in the Arctic Circle itself, 90 degrees north. The North Pole is not heating this year. Oh, the Greenland ice, Florida six feet. 2018-19, far less than the 2011-12 melt season. That lag time, we should already be seeing global flooding, but we're not. Lowest ice ever. Well, how will they know that until the end of the melt season comes? But it looks like we're in the range still. Corporate media jumping on the higher. ERAS temperatures above what you see for UAH satellite, which shows a drop of temperatures from June down in July globally. And how prepared are you for emergencies and all this changing climate that we're experiencing across the planet and this grand solar minimum intensification? My Patriots supply two-week grab-and-go food crate, 92 servings, or the four-week food supply, 252 servings. Use the link in the description box below for this special offer. I'm going to take you back a few days where I was asking where all the Arctic heat is because when you look at the Danish Meteorological Institute, 80 degrees north up to the North Pole, 90 degrees, its average temperatures are below. That was part of the story. The corporate media, it's hot, it's all-time runaway heat, but it's not. And then one of the prolific commenters on the global warming side points out the hypocrisy of using data to show that the Arctic is stable yet saying that you're not using enough of the Arctic. So I don't know, 80 to 90 degrees north latitude is the entire top of the planet that they keep saying is run away. Ice is melting into infinitum. It's so hot up there, but showing real data, it's not. But by showing that, oh, you didn't include down to like 78 degrees north latitude or 76 or 75. And by this thinking, I should just jump all the way down to like Spain. Might as well. But a glimpse into the 80 degrees north latitude to 90 degrees, that point that is the North Pole, is not heating as the corporate media is telling you. It has remained stable and has been even below normal temperatures. So please do the research. I've linked everything in the description box below. And these claims that there's more ice melt this year off of Greenland are also unsubstantiated, can be backed up with a quick search on Polar Portal. The red line is 2011 and 12. The blue line is this year's melt season, 2018-19. And we're not losing nearly as much ice. So by all recollection and explanation, we should have had coastal flooding already. Because if it was such a gargantuan melt event in 2011 and 12, I mean, sea level should have risen, right? That's eight years ago. The lag time should have filled the oceans, at least in the Atlantic. Didn't happen. But they're trying to make it that this year is even more runaway than 2011 and 12 in this corporate narrative echo box and then going on to the arctic sea ice this is the northern hemisphere ice if we were truly losing that much sea ice we're over on the far right here 2018-19 melt season i don't see anything out of the ordinary there and to claim that it's the lowest year ever for ice is a bit disingenuous we haven't even reached the low melt point which will occur the first week of september or so at that time then we can put it in the books but this runaway, oh, it's the most ice melt ever. I'll take you back to DMI once again here. The black line is where we are. And the black line runs right over other lines during the significant melt portion of, well, the melt season. Ice melts during the summer. Basic equation. Snow comes. Well, now it's coming in July and June. But normally it comes in December and January or February. But even glimpsing this 2019 black line, it looks like it's above 2015 and just a sliver below 2016. I don't know how that's the lowest year ever, but we'll see where it tapers out at the bottom of the melt season right in September. And then we can draw our final conclusions if it's the lowest amount of ice ever. And I linked climate for you below as well. This is a great place to go to get up to the minute or the day charts. And when we look at the sea ice extent, it looks like it's leveled off, actually, the melt since about 2017. And you can see the averages through the center there, that dark blue line. Does that look like runaway melting to you? And that's all the way from 2002. Now, one of the global temperatures, University of Alabama Huntsville, Dr. Roy Spencer putting out the monthly 
Great resource, also linked in the description box. The July 2019 temperatures are 0.38, and that is down from 0.47 in June. Interesting factoid there. But here's where we get into splitting hairs, because the corporate media doesn't like to use this data set because, well, it shows temperatures that are not to the all-time record high hot. Reanalyzer does, though. And in Dr. Roy Spencer's site, he puts out this explanation of how there's a substantial departure that Climate Reanalyzer uses to put the data out. And Climate Reanalyzer always is the hottest on the web. So by all accounts, UAH put it at the fourth warmest July in the last 41 years. Not the hottest. It's a narrative. So let's take a look here at the departure of UAH and indeed, data sets used by the World Meteorological Organization, IRAS. Look at that, 0.18 above. That's almost two tenths of a degree warmer. Of course, you're going to get hottest ever temperatures if you're using these kind of data models. Incredible how they're able to just bend fact and choose any set they want. Because cherry picking the hottest set to prove your point isn't doing anybody any good. In case in point, this is the HAD Crew T3. And notice where they have on the far right of the chart as well. Coming in 2019, temperatures dropping. So at least the Climate Research Unit here is putting out something decent showing drops in global temperature. And oh, France was such a heat wave, such a heat wave as the hottest ever. Well, it's circled there so you can see how far out of bounds the heat really was. If it was that exceptional, it should be much, much, much darker in red than it is. So again, that was a blown out two-day event by the media to prove a point. We're still having snow across the northern hemisphere, and they're saying it's warming oceans, but these events didn't happen in 1998, and we're getting snow in July and snow in June, unexpected snows. There's another explanation for it. Cycles. Carbon Brief even shows here the current temperatures are the warmest in at least the past 2,000 years. So, it was as warm 2,000 years ago, huh? So, I mean, it dipped and then it came back up according to this. That's a cycle, a grand solar minimum cycle. And this graphic pretty much sums up the corporate media with this type of information. doesn't match their narrative, how they would interview the planet. Hi, planet Earth. How are you doing today? Oh, hello. Apparently, you've been greening a little bit. How come? Well, it's all the extra CO2. And the reporter asks, CO2, isn't that bad? Surely it's bad. And the planet says, no, it's food for all my vegetables, trees, plants. I love CO2. Cut. We can't use that. And the planet responds, well, I thought you wanted a greener world. See, the corporate media can't have it both ways. They want the CO2 tax. But in reality, the facts are saying we don't need a tax. It's a natural cycle. These cycles were known by ancient cultures as well. They left us messages. The cycle of economy that we're going to go through a severe contraction. Check out the silver coin, one kilogram here. But it shows one of the most famous calendars to map through the heavens and the cycles. We just have better instrumentation now. Our modern world should have even greater insight into the effect from the sun and the decreasing crop yields across the planet. Everything's intertwined. The chessboards the governments are moving across the planet, the economy that looks by all the means to contract, the population migration, and the food price rises. And with all these economic contractions, you're starting to see people reevaluate what value is. So in your mind, what is value? What could be traded? What will be a monetary usable instrument, if you will? Gold, silver, a shovel, seeds, cryptocurrency, our old debt system can't hold on any longer. In my personal opinion, there will be a shift into new mediums of value as we move through these next decades. What people consider valuable, which I talk about in my new book, Climate Revolution, explaining in the first 120 pages what a grand solar minimum is, how it affected societies in the past, changes we're looking for in the future based on past cycles, and the last half of the book is about solutions so you can prepare yourselves and your families to keep yourself safe during this transition period and also find niches for goods and services that will be needed during the transition so you can prosper financially as well as mentally, physically, and spiritually. 
The link's in the description box below. Climate Revolution, the Grand Solar Minimum. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you got something out of it, and I will see you next video.